So who am I? And who are you? And of course, I'm addressing believers. We all need to understand that you are someone God values more than you can possibly imagine. Now, lest you have any doubts of how, God, how much God values you, I want you to consider some of the descriptions that God applies to those who accept his invitation to know him. He talks about us as being blessed. He talks us about us being predestined, being chosen, right? And he talks about us as having a new identity. Let's look at, first of all, where he says that you are blessed. Ephesians 1.3. He says that, that God has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. The word that's used there in the, in the original language in which this letter was written is the word eulogia. It's from where we get the term eulogy. When it says that God blesses us, that's the term he uses. God always speaks well of his children. In fact, God only speaks well of his children. Isn't it amazing how when somebody who is an authority says something about us that it has tremendous impact on us? God speaks of you to those around him, to the angels, to those who are gathered around him in the same way that he speaks about his son. Well, not only does he speak well of you, not only are you blessed, but you are also chosen. Uh, look with me at verse 4 of Ephesians 1. It says, For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. King of the universe chose to have a relationship with you. Now you might say, well, wait a minute. I chose him. I, I, I chose, freely chose to trust Christ as my Savior. And indeed, if you're a believer, then, then you did do that. In fact, you, you see multiple invitations throughout scriptures for us to exercise our will and to put our trust in Christ as our Savior. But we also have to realize that in salvation, there is a great mystery of God's choosing of us as, of us as well. You chose him, but he also chose you. Both choices are essential. Both are valid. And because of that, you can be sure of this. God values you more than you can possibly imagine. But you also have a brand new identity. Now look with me at verses 5 and 6 and notice what he says. He predestined us to be adopted as his sons through Jesus Christ in accordance with his pleasure and will to the praise of his glorious grace which he has freely given us in the one he loves. Now, under that truth, the whole idea that he has certainly given us a new identity, there are some subordinate truths, you might say. One of them is that God has a plan for your life, not just for us in general, but for you specifically as an individual. And God's plan for your life, which is unfolding for you even today, is neither casual nor haphazard or by chance. And one of the grand overarching themes is that your destiny is to possess the same character qualities of his son. And he relates to you now based not upon what you used to be and all the struggles even that you have now, but rather on what you will be in eternity. That's the way he pictures you. And you're no longer a slave. That's another important aspect. Ephesians 1, 7 through 8 says, In him we have redemption through his blood. Very significant word, redemption. Redemption is the idea of being bought back. It's the, it's the imagery of someone going into a slave auction, buying a slave, and then not taking him home and enslaving him further, but setting him free. That's the idea of redemption. And the result is forgiveness. And the word that he uses there, forgiveness, refers to the cancellation of a debt. Verse 6 says he lavished grace upon us. That whole idea of lavishing somebody is not just dampening them, not just, not just giving them a little bit, but giving them more enough, pouring it all over them, over and above, to have lots left over. In Christ, you are blessed in Christ, 
you are chosen. In Christ, you have a new identity and destiny, and it's all according to his plan. You are destined for that grand celebration of adoption. You are no longer a slave. You have been lavished with his love and grace.